the the part here where you're talking about this particular district in Rio, which you write about, um, you know, prostitution, women, um, and how this shift that happened over the centuries, and particularly with World War One and Western Europe's, in you know, kind of expansive role in the world, um, and how this is playing out in Brazil today. So I just, I guess I could ask you, you know, how did you draw that connection? You know, you visited Vila Mimosa. Um, yeah. So. The way this whole thing happened, it started because I wanted to write about Vila Mimosa. Because I'm interested in talking about how, in terms of, like, fascism. I know Noam Chomsky thinks that it's giving too much credit to these people <laughs> to call them fascists because there's no ideology. Yeah. And I think it's fantastic if he says that. He's right. But in terms of, you know, fascism, I believe that there is an organized, this nationalistic justification for the genocide mm -hmm. of certain peoples. Mm -hmm. I feel like mass murder is a necessary, like quite relevant part of fascism. And the reason why I feel like, yes, yeah, so what does it mean to be Brazilian, right? What does it mean, this, this national identity? They don't want to include trans people. They don't want to include indigenous people unless they are cultured. So you can be an indigenous person as soon as, you know, you have a master's degree and you know how to talk right. Mm -hmm. And and you, are, you know how to make money off of your land. That's another thing. Like you can be indigenous as soon as you know how to sell the stuff you produce there. Because if your land isn't making money, then yeah, there are people who will use this land to make money off. So what does it mean to be Brazilian? And there's a war. It's a war. And it's not a balanced one. Absolutely not a balanced one. Uh, because all of the people who don't fit the idea these fascists have for what it means to be Brazilian, they're massacred. And they're being massacred. Black people poor people, like they're homeless people being killed in ways, there's a genocide that happens in ways that are not so obvious as the um, I want to say the Holocaust was perhaps even in the beginning of the fascist movement in Germany it wasn't so clear either but there are ways of doing it now that you don't notice and these people are dying either with like ridiculous, like absurd uh, health systems where people die from diseases that are just, you know, doesn't make sense to die from this anymore because they have poor diet, they don't have a roof or they have poor living conditions. Uh, there are people who live, you know, it's a way of killing. And there's also a way of killing in mass, like mass which is women in particular, where you, if it's illegal, let's say, during this, the First World War, the superfluous unmarried women, there are a lot of them because there are so many men who died during war, mm -hmm. they were shifted around because the state, the states at the time, Western states, didn't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. Because what's the point of a woman? <laughs> you know, other than <laughs> marrying her off to somebody. You know, right. and most specifically, what's the point of white women? White women are meant to marry. Non-white women or peasant women are meant to work. So they've always worked. And if you're in a society where there's no room for a woman to work, there's no workforce where they are welcome. What are they going to do? But they can't. They don't marry. Or of course, it's a sweeping statement, but. They're not, you know, white enough to marry and they're not men enough to do a, a so-called so -called respectable job. Now, we love to, like, people tend to see prostitution as this thing that's degrading to women if there's something wrong with the women who perform it. But it's not. There's something wrong with the system that makes this way of living the only viable one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in fact, I feel like these women are really heroic, heroic for making it, 
for for having the courage, you know, to live on like this. Yeah. And can I? I don't know. But that's why it all started there. It started with me discovering that the red light district in Rio, which is the most famous one in Brazil, because of the sex tourism and all that. It all started with Eastern European women that came from Europe during the First World War. Mm. Okay. That's where it all began. And that's where I got into this rabbit hole about the First World War and what Slavs, Slavic women meant in Europe. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, and before we get into that, I just want to, I do want to quote a paragraph from your piece because it really, I think, is important because when we talk about sex work, and we talk about consent, and we talk about all these these subjects. I mean, it's it's com- it can be complicated, but it's also not very complicated either. <laughs> like for so this this particular paragraph, um, you say the transition from empires to nation states has also initiated a change in the role of women in Western society. After World War One, there was a quote surplus of uh, shit. Uh, quote, sur- superfluous women. Oh, superfluous women. <laughs> Thank you. You're helping me out so much right now. Um, in, <laughs> in other words, they were single because of the high death toll in battle. In England, for example, women between 25 and 40 were selected and sent to colonies where this, where the surplus was reversed because colonizers were men. This selection process was consensual in theory, but what options do they actually have? I would argue that the process was essentially uh, that the process was essentially deportation because lack of options falls far from consent. It was contrary to state rules to have no husband. It was illegal. So you're to end that that quote there, but you are saying like, okay, to call this consent is just it's not an accurate term or an accurate way of framing it at all. And that's the way I feel in general about often. Again, broad generalization here, but with sex work in general, it can be framed as an empowering or something that could be empowering for those participating in it. And I get that, but it's also a question of, well, what what does consent really mean in those circumstances? Um, and uh, in this particular case, you're, you're, re- you're really raising that question. Yeah. What is consent in general in this society? I mean, I don't consent to having to pay rent. I'm sorry. I don't consent to the private property laws. I think it's outrageous that people don't have a place to live and that they're homeless people. I think it's outrageous that we need to resort to these things in order to have a roof Mm. and have food. Mm -hmm. And even then, you barely make it. And then we are made to think that this is our fault, that it's our problem for not fitting into society. So I think I respect, well, I think it's really courageous work. And I, for certain, have a tremendous respect for sex workers. Um, some probably might say that it's consensual, that they choose and they want to do this job. And I respect that. Some might say that they have no option. Of course, they would like to get out of it and do something else. Some never had a choice. And there are, there's a right range of experiences here. But in the end, what can, like, as a woman, there are so many things that happen without our consent in general. You don't have to be a prostitute to be constantly concerned about what does consent mean about what is done to our bodies what's done to our minds Um, and I think a lot of people can relate to this in society like what do we actually consent to in the system we live in yes so I, I certainly don't consent to the electoral system and I don't consent to most of the things I deal with on a daily basis but we deal like we kind of we're trying right yeah. <laughs> doing our best and they're also doing their best and i think they're remarkable and i wanted to show that in this piece and i wanted to show also the historical relevance of these people of these women and this work and of this villa 